Down, buddy. Hey. Good. Babe, what is this? Oh, um, we're just trying something new here. What the f is this? So this this here is just no, a... don't touch my dog. All right, hey. all right. It's... Everybody and welcome back to the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. If you're new here, hello, I'm Tom. If you've been here for a while, thank you for your loyalty. I appreciate it. So to be completely honest, this session gets pretty uncomfortable and it's something I've personally never dealt with. But at the end of the day, I think the dog ends up winning this entire session and I'm really, that's all I really care about. So you guys are just gonna have to watch to see how it unfolds and do me a favor and leave your comments in the comments below and let me know what you guys think of this video. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good. My name is Carol. Tom. This is Delta. Nice to meet Hi, you. Hi, nice to meet you. Hey, crazy boy. <laughs> um, my husband's on his way. He's okay. Stuck cool. Ready? You can come on in and have a seat. Yeah. I know I remember you guys in the consultation, but um, what are you guys primarily working on? So um, basically just basic recall. Um, Actually had a really scary incident the other day. Okay. Where he uh, almost ran out in traffic. We live in a really busy area, and um, I just I need him to come back when. Yeah. I call him. Um, did he like? Did he just run away and not listen and just yeah. basically almost get smashed by a car? Yeah, and uh, he just he loved me so much. Yeah. He, it was it was awful. It was really awful. Okay. <laughs> no, I know. All right, so. You know, like I always tell people, the biggest thing about recall is just understanding that when a dog makes a decision to say, see you later, I'm chasing a squirrel, rabbit, or even like him, because he's, you know, dobies are naturally very goofy, like I want to see everybody type dogs. Even if they see a person, the chances of you getting them back with just like, hey, Delta, please come back is going to be less likely than if you had something that can actually control them, like, you know, with equipment. So, <clears throat> hey bud, um, what I would recommend is probably just doing like remote collar training. Okay. Are you familiar with that? Um, not really. Um, he has all of his basic training. So okay. I don't really need that, but yeah, just. Okay. Yeah, so we'll, we'll switch over to a remote collar and see how he does with it. But like if, he's basic, if his basics are good and you just want to focus on the recall and it sounds like because you live in a busy area, it's going to be dangerous if he doesn't. Um, we'll switch to a remote collar and then I'll show you how that works. Um, I just have a couple questions. Sure. That's like a shock collar. I'm not like really. Yeah. So. I, it, I know that my husband like would yeah. not be okay with that. Yeah. So I it's, like yeah, I mean, and I get that cause, and we see that a lot. And so here I'll take him for a second. So he's like not, Sorry, no, yeah, he's, he's trying to go crazy on you. But like the, so I understand that. And like, I'm glad that you brought it up because there's a, there's a significant difference between a shock and the remote collars that we use. And, and like what so, we do is we really like to introduce the remote on the lowest level possible so they barely can comprehend like, oh, I kind of feel something. And it's a very, very non-aversive, non-corrective, doesn't hurt the dog at all. Like I wanna keep him safe too, you know what I mean? But like the most responsible thing for you to do is if he gets off again and you can't literally touch him from that distance off leash, the likelihood of you getting him back is, you know, and, and again too, like, because that happened, the likelihood of him not getting hit by a car because you live in such a busy area, you kind of got lucky. Yeah. And so, you know what I mean? Really lucky. Yeah, so if his basics are good, I think that like the remote collar is gonna be the best option. And you're saying it, it doesn't hurt him at right. all? It's not like, okay. Yeah, it's a, no, it's a, it's, that's a great question. And I, I really, want people to ask those questions when we're talking about equipment because there's a wrong way and a right way to do everything, mm -hmm. right? So for us, we really, really like to introduce it in a way that is very communicative. It's look at it as an extension of your arm. And you can't do that when he's, when you, when he's, when he, I was gonna drop the leash, he would've ran. You can't do that if, you're, if he's off leash. I mean, you have no control over him. And you can do recall all you want till you're blue in the face come, 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 come. But my thing is, is like, I love dogs just as much as you do. And the last thing I want is a dog to go, yeah, mom, there's a squirrel over here. I'm out of here. So it has levels where it certainly can be corrective. I'm not gonna try to be naive and say like, no, it, there's no way that it could hurt him because there certainly is. But the levels that we're gonna use is probably on a Dogtra 280C, 
that has 130 levels, right? So just like the car that you drove here on, you probably have zero to 120. You're not gonna drive out of here and go 120 everywhere, right? So it's the same process with this, is we're gonna say, hey buddy, hey buddy, and he's gonna go, hey, I wonder what this little sensation is in my neck, and then once he realizes it's me, I can then extend my ability to say, hey buddy, come, and then touch him from a distance. How long do you usually take? Another good question. Yeah, so like today we'll start it, um, and I usually like to do about five, five sessions with like a client here, but if he was here for an extended amount of time, I can do the remote color process with like three days because I'll do it. I usually do quality over quantity. So I'll do 15 minutes of, hey, buddy, hey, buddy, come, 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 association. And then once he gets it, I put him away. But right. Have you used it on a lot of your other clients and yep. a lot of other, your dogs? Yeah. So I, I, I like to introduce the remote collar to dogs that know their basics because it's, it's an association. It's just a new communicative thing. I've taught dogs new behaviors with the remote collar, but I, I really like to just use it in association and collaboration with what he already knows. So basically, and I'm going to show you if you're comfortable with it. Um, and I know you said your husband doesn't really care for it. Is, is there a reason? Or? Uh, yeah, he just had a bad experience with it. Uh, and he's just, you know, yeah. kind of hard-headed about that. So sure. it's going to be a tough sell. I, I'm still, I mean, I'm open to it. I'm yeah. apprehensive, but my husband will be... Yeah. <laughs> a little more difficult to convince. Okay. And so when he comes, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah. Um, but like, like I said, it's just one of those things that I like when people are apprehensive about it because it gives me an opportunity to like put my foot in the door and really teach them what it is. Okay. So I'll grab it yeah. and I'll show you how it works. Okay. And then when he comes in, you know, I'll, I'll explain it to him. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. Cool. Good. Now that the collar's on, uh, basically we can start the training process. Hey, my here. Oh, cool. Oh, hello. Hello. Hi. Get down, buddy. Hey. Good. Babe, what is this? Oh, um, we're just trying something new here. What the f*** is this? So this this here is just no, a... don't touch my dog. All right, all right. It's, all right, it's just a remote collar. Like, we talked about this. Babe, I thought we agreed on this. We're not shocking our dog. No, it's, I know, I know. Uh, but, um, you know, we talked about it. It might be a good option for us to try this kind of different thing. You tell me we brought Delta all the way here, and our best option is a shock collar. Let's just listen to what he has to say. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm here for training. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna work on it. And I know you're upset. Uh, it's not a shock collar, though. It's. I know you think it is. Carol and I talked about this. It's completely different from a shock collar. We're using a remote collar. And I know, I know, it's confusing. I get it. But at the same time, like, give me an opportunity to explain you, explain to you what it is, and then, if you don't feel comfortable. We won't use it. You're okay with this? Well, I think it would be a good option for us since, you know, remember what happened the other day, you know, I think we should at least talk about it and maybe consider it. Again, like my goal, like I'm, I never tell people what they have to do. Like for me, it's his safety or bust. That's the only thing I care about. And I know that he almost got hit by a car the other day. And ultimately, like my goal is to be able to control him off leash. I do this all the time. People come to me for this type of training all the time. I'm very comfortable with it. If you give me an opportunity to explain to you exactly what it is and what it can do for you and your dog, and you don't like it, you can walk out. Or we can do something different. Like we have, we don't, that's the thing, is like we don't have to do that. I'm just saying like we talked about the most responsible thing to do with that, with his off-leash control. Okay. Nothing else will be able to touch him off-leash except that collar. Like because the other day he wasn't coming back, all right? right? Right. So give me 10 minutes. If you don't feel comfortable, it's fine. All right. Fine. OK, cool. 10 minutes. Cool. All right, so I'm going to just show you how it works. Like I said, I'm going to progressionally show you how this works. I'm going to use a little bit of food. Now, a couple things about the remote collar is Delta Sit is, is I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to really introduce it to a dog that doesn't have his basics down. He knows his sit. He knows his down. He knows his heel. So all this is, is an extension of your voice. So every time I ask him to do something, I'm just going to tap the remote just to tell him like, hey, buddy, that's me. So I'm getting his attention. And at this level, he's barely feeling, he's kind of like, hey, what's that? So put it this way. It's like if I were to give an alien a cell phone and it rang in his pocket, he'd be like, what is that? He picked it up. He answered it. It shut off. So he's like, okay, when this goes off, I have to do something to shut it off type thing. So what's the difference between what you're doing and the shock? 
So a shock would be into like the dog owner's world like yourself would be something that hurts the dog, something that aversively affects the dog in a way that he feels pain or, or uncomfortability, right? Which is what we don't want. Exactly. And it's what I don't want either. And so for, <laughs> I know, buddy, sit. So for him, it, the stimulation levels are so low that when I'm tapping hit, he's, he just barely feels it. So it's very, very low. He barely feels the sensation. Yeah, it's it's a little less than vibration actually. Like I'm gonna put it on you guys in a minute and show you like so you so you know what it feels like. You put it on me? Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. Trust me, right. I promise. So dog training is like you know being a chef. There's so many different ways to do the dish. Everybody kind of has their own style of how they do things. And so for me, the remote collar is very very basic. I'm going to associate my verbal cues. So he knows sit, he knows heel, he knows come, he knows all that stuff. And I'm just gonna associate the remote collar with that. And so with that being said, I'm gonna demonstrate that right now. So he's away. I'm gonna turn the collar on the low level, which I'll explain in a minute. <laughs> I'm gonna wait for him to get out. So there, Delta come. Yes, good boy, sit. Good boy. So I just used the remote collar twice there, okay? I'll, show, I'll tell you in a minute what the levels are on. So when he went away, so instead of going under a truck or a car at, at a fast moving pace, I said, come, I tapped the remote, he came to me, I put him in a sit, and now I can break him. So for the first time, he felt that sensation and he responded beautifully. He said, oh, that's me, and he came right to me. And so over time, what basically happens is, is when he feels that sensation, and again, it's not a shock, it's not a correction, does not hurt him whatsoever. He just goes, oh, somebody, somebody's getting my attention. Kind of like what I was talking about earlier with the cell phone going off to the alien where they're like, what the heck is that? And once they figure out, oh, it's you, then they understand it and it becomes a very nice communicative way. And we do this again, so we get out. Delta, come. Yes, good come. Sit. Yes, good boy. And obviously, guys, do you feel like this is, hurt? like knowing your dog, break. It's not hurting him, right? I mean, we can all... Right. We can all agree that this isn't something that like, he's like, you know, see, and that's the thing is people don't understand the process of how this works. They don't really understand. They just think that the dog goes out. I crank this sucker up till it hurts him and he comes back screaming. That couldn't be farther from the truth, like literally farther from the truth. So we're going to do it again. He's over there by his buddy. Delta come. Yes. Good come. Sit. Wonderful job. And obviously anybody out there. Okay. Break that thinks that the remote collar is this shocking, inhumane thing, how inhumane does this look? Do you know what I mean? And it just gives you an opportunity to be responsible to touch him from a distance. So we're gonna do it again. Delta, come. Yes, good, come, sit. Good boy, and I'm giving him all of the food break that he wants when he comes to me. I have a question. Yep. If yep. the lowest level is working, why would yep. you even need something higher? So it's a good question. And again, like I talked about earlier, your car has 130 levels, if you will, right? When you drive, you're probably going 15 to 45 miles per hour, depending on where you're at. And so for him, the levels that I'm using are very communicative. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. And he's like, hey, what's that? Hey, what's that? Hey, what's that? Till he realizes, oh, that's you. And as you can see, he's having the time of his life. It doesn't hurt him. It doesn't affect him. So there are going to be times. Certainly, when what he's level is he on right now? he's on a f well, guess guess what level he's at. Thirty. Thirty? Nope. Nope. He's at a, he's at a four, and you know, Dobies being Dobies, I mean, they they are very sensitive to most things anyway. They're sensitive dogs, and so he's at a four, and he's going, hey, what do you want, right? And he's not yelping. It doesn't hurt him. He just feels it a little bit, so I'm getting his attention. But the beauty of it, guys, is I'm not using this. So watch this. So if he's out on the leash, I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use this. Delta, come. Good boy, sit, Go. <laughs> oh, you got a bunch of hair on your nose, dude. You guys got a funny dog here. So, <laughs> good, break. So the point is, is I'm, not use, I'm only using the leash right now just, just to get his attention if I need to, but he's responding so well to this, I don't need to. And so to answer your question about the level, is imagine he did what he did. Imagine he ran away like he did the other day. And you guys, like, I've, I've seen it. Like my dogs have done similar things in scenarios where your heart goes into your throat and you're like, my dog's about to die, right? And that sucks. So at that point, like he's at a four and a four is like this. We're having a talk. 
when we want to go up, we're like, hey, what's up, right? So we have levels too of communication to inflect to the dog how we feel, right? So if I'm like, Delta, come here, buddy. Good boy. That's a very communicative way. That's what I'm doing on this remote, on that level. Now, believe it or not, there's people out there that would say otherwise. They actually, and we've, we've, we've gone over this discussion many times where people would actually rather see their dog get hit by a car instead of punish them. It's crazy. It happens all the time. I've worked with people in different locations. I work with people all over the world that would say, you know, we really don't want to tell our dog no. It, it makes us uncomfortable to do that. Um, and I'm like, well, if he bites another person or he does whatever another time, he's going to be euthanized. And they're like, I'd rather him go out the way that he wants to versus tell him no. I know. Trust me. It ha but, but, but All right. So I'm going to let him out completely and not touch the leash. Delta, come. Yes. Sit. Oh, my God. You're having a hard time with this, and I know that this is very painful. Obviously not. Like, that's what I mean. It's like, he's like, yes. What do you need me to do? Break. Yeah, I just did it. So when he's over here and he's like sniffing around, I say his name, he feels it, he goes, I know what that means, he comes, he sits, what next? And so at that point, if he decides to go, screw you, mom and dad, there's a squirrel, then you can go up. And then that way he's like, oh, and he, but again, it's like parenting for me. It's like, would you punish your kid for spitting at the principal and kicking somebody in the face? Or be like, no, I, I want them to learn organically that that's wrong. Hell no, you have to set up structure and be like, dude, I don't want you to die. I don't want you under some fender's car. You know, like I don't want you to, to ruin your life and our life. And so what I'm using too is I'm using like, like this is fun for him, obviously. I'm using a lot of positive reinforcement. I'm using treats to, to reward him for coming with the sensation of the collar. So before you got here, we were talking about being able to, to, to get his attention from a dis sit. Good. Good. So there, that was like a good indication of how that works. I say sit. Yeah. So I tap the remote to associate what he's feeling. Mm -hmm. Sit. Good. And see how responsive that is. And again, wireless. I'm using this pressure. Sit. See? Good. And he's like, oh. yes. Good. And you can, this is actually getting banned in certain places. Like this remote collar, like you're seeing, like over time, the, the leash disappears. It's just this. Hey, buddy. Come, good. Hey, buddy, come. This is your reliability. And it's like, is this 100%? Nothing is. With dogs and animals in general, horses, giraffes, rhinos, dogs, whatever, nothing's 100%. But this is so much better than, Fido, come, I have food. And they're like, this is a squirrel. Mm -hmm. You're done. Like, you, you, you have, no, and that's irresponsible. And so there's places, especially Europe, and then even in the United States, bills are starting to be exposed to Congress of like, we need to ban these. Imagine. Like, and I get it, like, and that's why I'm happy you reacted the way you did is because I want to just shed light on like, this isn't what you think. This is so much different than that. We've come so far. Technology, especially with, with dog chair. I mean, these guys are doing things with remotes that nobody else is doing. Yeah. Delta, come. Yes, good, come. This is around a $200 unit. People are going to PetSmart and buying real, and once you guys feel this, you'll feel the quality of this. It's, it's nice and solid. There's metal. There's hard plastic involved with this. This goes a half a mile, so on and so forth. And there's a lot of places that are selling really crappy equipment. If you go out and buy that piece of crap, it's not going to have the lower levels to communicate. It's going to fail. It's not going to work. People are going to shelf it. But more importantly, even if you do get a nice unit like a Dogtra, and people go out and don't use it right. Like, you, like when you came in, you were like, what the hell is this? And I'm like, yeah. let me explain, right? And so people will get it. They'll put it on their dog. And Delta, come. Delta, come. Good. Break. Good. Delta, come. Yes, good boy. So usually people need to see a reaction. Break. They need to see, like, it, he didn't flinch. He didn't squeal. You don't want that. Yeah, I mean, if you put, I mean, if you put this remote collar on and you turn it all the way up, it's definitely going to be averse to him. He's not going to like it. But it's the difference between life and death. And for me, being able to have the ability when he's way over there, half a mile, and some of these collars go more than that, to say, hey, buddy, get your butt back here. You're going to be punished is the most humane thing you can do. Because there's so many people that are like, I would never use this. I'm like, you should be ashamed of your country banning these things because you're limiting the lifestyle of a dog being a dog. I talk about this a lot with my trainers 
is the more we start taking away the tools that allow our dogs to be dogs, dogs ultimately are going to be euthanized more. Because when he goes off leash and he's running like a banshee all over the woods and hiking and having fun, you guys are going to be able to call him back. And if you didn't have that control and you're like kept him on a leash, you know, with a dobie that's a young dobie, has all this energy, he's ultimately going to show signs of a lot of behavioral problems. You're going to see a pushback from that. Not letting him go out and be a dog, you're going to see behavioral problems, which then ultimately, not saying you guys would, but ultimately dogs are going to be in shelters because they can't exercise, because they can't responsibly go off leash. There's going to be more dog fights because people are like, I'm not going to use remote collars, but I'm going to let my dog off anyway. They're going to get attacked by another dog or depending on where you live, wildlife, cars. Yeah. There's so much danger that goes into dogs that you have to make sure that you can get them back responsibly and be able to communicate them in a way. And that's what we're seeing a lot of today is people are just like so uneducated about the tools. They don't understand them at all. And people are trying to pass these things. And I can't tell you how many times people comment on my YouTube account. They're like, it's banned here. And I'm like, that's not good. Like that, you should be ashamed of that. There should be stricter laws on how to purchase them. And there should be some sort of code of ethics of like, no trainer should just give this to a dog. Like, you guys can't buy this from me until I know you get it. That's our code of ethics here. Because we are advocating for the tool. We're not going to let you walk out there and go, hey, babe, what's the number? A uh, hundred? Boom. He spikes up in the air. He yips. And then, of course, you're going to be right back where you started with when you came in and pissed off because it's exactly what it was the last time you tried to use it with your other dog. So I want to be fair to anybody who is uneducated about the remote collar and you're like, can you, can you do this? We talked about this in the beginning before you got here. Can you recall a dog without the equipment? Of course, but realistically, I can't tell you how, and how many people have come in. They're like, yeah, we've tried just treats. We've tried just positive reinforcement. We've tried these things. And when you get out there in the real world, how, what if he says no? Like, that's my question. People are always like, I don't want to use a remote, remote collar. I'm like, what if he just doesn't want to do it and he doesn't? It's your voice versus that squirrel and that prey drive with that dog. You're going against primitive, primal, instinctual, inherited genetics, DNA from a dog to chase a squirrel across the street versus your calm. There's, and that's the thing too, is they're in this freaking prey mode. They don't even hear you. You need to be, they need to be able to feel you. And that's what this allows you to do. And again, if we stay at these levels, you n he's never being punished for this ever. And really, if you're doing it right, you probably don't ever need to go up above, above 10. But like I said, it's just like a seatbelt. You wear it every day you get into your car and you never really need it. But when you do, thank God you had it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So now what I want to do is I just want to put it on you and that way you can feel. You're going to put it on me. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Again, Delta is a sensitive boy and he can take it. I think you can take it. So right. here, just oh. put this here and then okay. hold it. All right. So just put it on your wrist okay. and let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. Okay. It's on right now. What do you mean? It's on right now. Oh, you're hitting it? Yeah. So right now it's on. And that's why like, I try to tell people. Yeah. He can sense that? No, I don't feel it at all. Yeah. Not bad. So like there and now, now it's on for real. And it was on before, but now that you know it's on, I want you to tell me what level, you're, what, what level you feel it at. Okay. And again, he was at a five or a... a Wait until he feels it, and then we'll, we'll decide. Oh, okay, now I feel it. You feel it? Yeah. So it's like a little sensation, right? A little bit. So if, yeah, you, yeah. if you've ever been to um, the chiropractor where they use like the, the sensation okay. little things, yeah. it's the same thing. Huh. So that was a 22. Okay. So you feel it at a 22. Feel it, yeah. right? Like he's, a little bit. He's training and responding to a 5. Oh. So dogs can feel it at a low level. Yeah. They have, more, they have a lot more sensitivity nerves on their neck than we do. And so when you put it on a four or five, he feels it like you're like, oh, I kind of feel that. Like, it's just a sensation. It's not this whole like, holy crap, what is this? Right. Yeah. It's a it's a very integrated type of thing. Yeah. So that's what that that's what that's like. I'm sorry for how I reacted that's all right. before. It happens. I, I didn't know they had levels. I thought it was just like a shock right. collar. Like and that's it, that all it did was just zap yeah. the dogs. No. Right. And, and, they, and the other thing is, is like you had a bad experience before. Yeah. So like. You know, you now seeing it, do you feel more comfortable with it? Yeah, yeah. I'm, cool. Yeah. What about you? Yeah. Because it's something that will be really good for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. 
All right, so from here, we'll set you guys up with the next session. I'll see if Taylor's around, okay. and then we'll just continue to move forward with it. All right. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, man, no worries. Appreciate it. Come here, bud. Come here, bud. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. As you saw, it gets pretty uncomfortable, but at the end of the day, everybody was happy and comfortable moving forward. So again, it was a really uncomfortable session, but I'm glad it ended the way that it did. If you guys like this video, share it with as many people as you possibly can. I think that this has a great message and I hope it comes off that way. So share it in Facebook groups, share it on your Facebook, your Instagram, screenshot this, share it with as many people as you can. I would appreciate that. And again, if you guys are pro e-collar and pro off-leash tools after this video, thank you so much for sticking it out and learning more about the remote collar. Leave a comment in the comments below and let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like, of course, subscribe to my channel for more content. I will talk to you next time. Peace.